Welcome to the Ultimate Outlaws Raceway in Vernachen for more continued action from the South Africa versus United States Oval Track Test. We bring you all the sprint car action from round two and three in the show, and it's going to be absolutely amazing because there's a slightly different format for the final day's racing. We'll get into that as we get into the racing, but all this racing, as always, proudly brought to you by LSP. After an exceptionally good first outing, there looks like there's going to be a little bit of rivalry that has to be sorted out on the black stuff. And it's definitely going to be a fight to the front end between the top Americans and top South African drivers. The zero car of Jacques Ruiz is certainly looking to be a lot higher than what he was in the first one. And he'll be battling hard to try and ensure that he gets to the front end as quickly as possible. They'll be fighting with the likes of Billy Zurich, Quinton Simon, Andres Marks, and of course Carlson Jr. The Americans are in the house and they are looking to do some damage now to the South African contenders. This is heat one of round two. Heading down into turn one is Brian Tyler on the outside. The eight car is Andrew Marks on his inside. As the hammer drops, it's time to go racing. And what a start there from Marks. Doesn't hold anything back and gets to the front end, putting Tyler into second. Can the American do anything about the man out front? Highly unlikely. Jimmy McCoon also looking to get a little bit higher up than what he was in the first round. So there's going to be some big fights to be sorted out there. Billy Zurich already starting to apply the pressure onto the 45 car there. And Brian Lay is definitely feeling it. They come flying through and look at how these guys are already starting to up the pace. Remember these cars are capable of 170 miles an hour. That is some incredible pace and there's only one gear on them. So it's just everything she's got for an entire lap. Just roll off, roll on the entire time and try and keep the, the defense happening and of course the attack happening as much as possible. Attacking is important. You cannot afford to lose any ground to any of the drivers. And Carson Jr. is expecting to see if he can keep out the very hard charge coming from McCoon. McCoon is going around the outside. High side there for him. But you can see Quinton Simon is giving him a little bit of a run for his money as they come through there. The 11 car of Carson Jr. under attack now from the fellow South African. And you can see just how tight it is between the two of them. Quinton Simon looking for a way through. It looks like he might just be being held up ever so slightly. And look at the 11 car. That's Carson Jr. He's getting out of shape. So he's really battling to keep the grip out on the circuit. A little bit tough at the moment as they come through there. And there's a the move on the inside. The seven car Simon dives on the inside. Just doesn't able to make it stick. But once again, through turn one and two, absolutely lit up there in the 11 car is Carson Jr. Charles Carson Jr. is just fighting everybody behind him. Quentin Simon diving on the inside this time. He sees that car is a little bit squirrely and he's looking to capitalize on it. He gets on the inside. Now, what a move! Diving on the inside there, absolutely perfectly done. Yes, it took him two or three laps. And that's not the ideal thing because you get stuck behind a driver for two or three laps and you're gonna lose ground. Great move there from Mark. Freddie Mark diving on the inside of Derek Snyder. And Snyder, unfortunately, had no answer there. Mark now goes almost instantaneously on the attack at the front end though. You can see battling for Royal. <laughs> oh, and a little bit of smoke coming out of the five car as well as it heads down into turn one and two. Billy Zurich is feeling the pressure that's starting to come from behind. Mark is now applying that pressure onto the 11 car. And Carlson Jr., as we've already seen, has been out of shape on a few occasions. And Freddie Mark will realize that. Hopefully he can capitalize on it and get through. He's right there with Carlson Jr. now as they go into one and two and he dives on the inside. Carlson shuts the door. Not going to make it easy for him, that is for sure. The 21 car there, that is the red and black one. That'll be Mike Stutzman. And Mike Stutzman at the moment fighting with Andres Marks. Incredible battle. And as the flag comes out, what a start to this heat. Andres Marks taking the win, second place to Brian Tyler. So USA and SA, very, very close there on points. Brian Lay making it two of the USA in the top three, and Zurich and McCoon making up the top five. So the USA, three out of five in that top five in the first heat. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a change from, from last weekend, but it's good. Racing is good, tough. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, this week, we seem to got the car rolling the corners a little better, and you know, I think I'm a little racier. So, uh, you know, hopefully, I can give that eight car a run for its money tonight. The eight car now a little bit further back in the pack, so it's going to be a little bit different to the way things start out here for heat number two. The green flag gets out and it's the seven car, Quinton Simon, who gets the whole shot into turn one and two. Right on his tail, you can see already pressure being applied there by the 21 car, Stutzman. But Stutzman's under his own pressure, coming from the 71 of Jimmy McCoon. McCoon is looking for a way through. Very tight, look at Marks though. Wow, he's not holding anything back. He's made up two or three positions coming into that first lap and already starting to apply the pressure onto the back end of Carlson Jr. Hopefully they've got that car a little bit better handling this time. It was a little bit sideways for my liking and it still is. 
That's the way he likes to drive by the looks of things. Oh, 45 out of shape and on the inside. Brian Lay, unfortunately, just catching it and gets back on track. Don't look like we might need a, a safety car or all course caution because I think that car has got back onto the track just in time. Because here they come down to that point where he went off. Oh, man, look at that. Carlson Jr. is just lighting that thing up in the sunset. 70's got no answer, and Derek Snyder's thinking to himself, what is this kid doing? 71 on the inside of him, of course, is McCoon, and McCoon's saying, come on, you got to work together here. We need some more Americans at the front end. The fast South Africans are starting to come through, and so is, of course, second place in race number one, the 10 car there of Brian Tyler. Tyler, as you heard in his interview, is feeling racy, and you can see just how hard he's pushing to get to that front end of the race. This is the front end, and right now the battle is between Stutzman and the third place car there, Carlson Jr., He's got the hard charge coming from behind though. And you can see McCoon now looking for opportunities. Looking to see where that car might just get a little bit too out of shape and he can dive on the inside. It's battle of the ones there. 71, 11 and 21. <laughs> Incredible dice it is. They're going to be keeping a little bit weary though because the five car and race one winner Billy Zurich is only just behind them. And there's a possibility that Zurich could capitalize and get through. Quinton Simon looking for an opportunity to just disappear at the front end. That's exactly what he's done. With this little battle, they're slowing each other down ever so slightly and allowing Simon a chance to get away. But it's not over just yet, because I think Freddie Mock might just have a little bit to say here in the closing stages. Look at how he's coming from the back end, looking good and looking for a chance to dive on these guys as they come through there. This is a superb battle, I've got to say. One of the best we've seen all night. And now, as they get in there, the single-digit cars are starting to play a big role. Zurich at the front end of this little battle, and Tyler's right with him. Exactly like it was in the first heat. In third place, oh, this little battle, you can see the eight car. And this time, it looks like Andres Marks has not got the max there to the ten car. And Brian Tyler will be very happy about that. So as they fly down that back straight away, look at this. Oh, incredible stuff. Stutzman is pushing hard. And he's pushing hard to stay in for a possibility of a second, or possibly on the podium. The 11 car and the 71 car still there. Battle of the Ones continues as they go through turn one and two. Very close between these three. Very evenly matched as well, and the driving skill almost identical. The only concern I have is that sideways action coming out of Carlson Jr.'s car. I'm not quite sure if that's going to help him or hinder him. He goes around the outside, though. Maybe I could be completely wrong here, as he tries something big on the outside of Mark Stutzman. And he's pushing it all the way through. Turn one and two, three and four as well. Looking for an opportunity on the high side. One lap to go. The white flag is out as they go down into turn one. Absolutely awesome stuff. There's the 7 one car diving on the inside. Oh, it's cost him. Carlson Jr. going a little bit too high. Comes straight back at him. Uses the inside of the track. And he gives a little tap there. Oh, the 21 car gets sent onto the inside of the track. And Stutzman is out. I think there might be a little COC maneuvering happening after this race. After that bit of serious maneuvers at the front end. No one was on Quinton Simon's tail. He was way ahead. But Freddie Mark eventually being gifted second place ahead of Carlson Jr., who was dropped down to third. Stutzman for blocking all the way through there in fourth place and McCoon in fifth. Yeah, I mean, we jumped in uh, Isaac's car right there at qualifying and turned a lap in it. So, uh, you know, the, the heat races were kind of just kind of tuning the car to me and trying to figure out what I wanted out of it. And, uh, you know, we're starting sixth, kind of in the middle, toward the back. So, you know, I don't know what we're going to have for the race, so we'll see. Third and final heat of round two of the USA versus South Africa coming up next. Welcome back to Ultimate Outlaws in Vereniging and looking forward to the final heat here of the USA versus South Africa in round two of this international test. It is the usual protagonist at the front and what we've seen all night is eight and 10 going at it. Andres Marks gets the whole shot, holds on with Tyler right on his tail. Brian Tyler from the USA looking for a chance to just turn things around after heat number one and losing out to Andres Marks as they went through that heat one action. 71 and 70 at each other's throats there. Derek Snyder and McCoon fighting hard and looking for a chance to bring the USA a little bit higher up in this entire pack. Carlson Jr. is already under the threat of the COC. He's seen what he can do and he also knows that that car, even though it's a bit out of shape, can certainly go any side of any car on track and get through. Freddie Mark just behind him. He knows that he's got an opportunity as well after being gifted second place in the second heat. But he's too far back right now for my liking. He's got a lot of work to do to try and make up the ground and I'm not quite sure if he's going to have enough laps to do it. The seven car put in Simon certainly looks like it's up for the challenge. Having a big look on the inside of Brian Lay as they go through into turn one and... Oh! So close between those two drivers. Incredible stuff actually. And now we had it. Here we go again. 71 is the protagonist. 
The 11 car dives on the inside. That's Carlson Jr. following through and following suit on McCoon's manoeuvre. No answer from Snyder. He tries to keep him out, but he's got the outside line and he's got to give a little bit of room there. As he comes through, well, he doesn't give any room. He just keeps his line and it doesn't look like there was any answer, unfortunately, there for Carson Jr. Quinton Simon has bridged that gap and closes onto the back end of that 4-5. Brian Lay could be in trouble. Brian Lay looking to try and keep him out, but it's not going to be easy to do because remember, you've also got the five car right behind there of Zurich. Billy Zurich and Simon going at it. Teammates for South Africa fighting with the American as they head into turn one and two now looking for a chance. I think one must play the blocker and one must play the, the attacker and that's exactly what they're trying to do here. Trying to catch the American off guard. Seasoned campaigner in V8 sprint cars. He's going to know exactly what to do in this situation and is not going to be bothered by it whatsoever. Andres Marks out front seems to be hanging on to the lead but second place is still up for grabs. Brian Tyler at this stage hanging on. Mark diving it on the inside as all of a sudden there's a slight mistake there. Carlton Jr. just running ever so slightly wide and opening up the door. And Freddie Mark diving on the inside there and taking up that opportunity. Still no change here though. I thought there'd be a maneuver at some point here. And expecting Billy Zurich to dive on the inside at that point. But you can see Zurich is battling a little bit as Simon goes on the attack. Simon now has had enough. He's on the inside and he gets through. Great move there from Quinton Simon. Forcing the American up onto the high side and getting through eventually on Brian Lane. Only a couple of laps to go for these guys. Quinton Simon has got through now. We're looking for Billy Zurich to do the same thing. Remember, these uh, South African drivers have got to get at least three or four drivers in the top five to make sure that they stay in the hunt here for the third round of this three-way test series between America and South Africa. Coming into the closing stages now, and back markers are going to play a role here, or are they? Is Andres Mark going to even worry about them? Not with that kind of pace. Look at how he's just absolutely barreling around here. There is no concern whatsoever for the eight car, and no one even in sight. He has got this one absolutely dialed in, and I don't think we've got any issues whatsoever there for the eight car to take the victory. Brian Tyler not having the same way as he goes through in May 80, the South African boys just helping out their teammates a little bit there and ensuring that the Americans got to go a little bit harder around the outside to find a way past the back markers. 71 is in the house, and I can tell you McCoon is up for the battle. But he's got a very seasoned South African campaigner in the high-tech mag repair machine, the five car of Billy Zurich. Zurich is just fighting and fending and looking left and right and ensuring no one gets through. The chicken flag is going to come out though for the eight car under his marks and Tyler will come through for second. How many Americans are going to be in that top ten? Let's have a quick squiz. It's Tyler, Lay, McCoon, Snyder and Stutzman. So there's a lot of them in the top nine compared to the South Africans. The points are going to be so close heading into round three. Incredible to see some South Africans and Americans sharing the victories here tonight. But uh, looking at the way things turned out, with the amount of Americans in the top 10 compared to the South Africans, it looks like there's going to be a uh, pretty even Steven in terms of points. We'll wait to see what the confirmation is there. But of course, winning the night, Andres Marks and getting the flag. V8 sprints now in the house, and these are all the South African contenders that are fighting not in the test, but on their own. And it looks like it's going to be uh, a very good battle here at the front end, as Rul Dupasi already starts to look for a way to the front. He finished up in second place as they went into turn one, and he's fighting hard there with the 7-4 of Kenny Coase. Coase got a good start. Rochelle also got a fantastic start on the outside of Adrian Fonsal, and eventually dives on the inside to get through. So a little bit of chopping and changing in that mid-pack. 14 is Rudy Forster on their tail, looking to get through. And you can see all of a sudden we've got some big, big contenders looking to fight at the front end of this all South African field. These, of course, the guys who didn't quite make it into that uh, top fight for the USA versus SA. But needless to say, they're still here to put on a massive display for this big crowd who are in attendance yet again for another round of this USA versus South Africa test at the Ultimate Outlaws. Rochelle is starting to make some ground up and slowly but surely clawing her way to the front. The Pretoria no Toyota V8 sprint car is in big, big trouble. Any second now, it could be a change-up. And you can see just how hard she's having to push there to ensure that she stays on the back end of that car. It's not going to be an easy day in the saddle, that is for sure, because Stephen Fischer certainly knows his way around and can definitely make that car very wide. But Rochelle is allowing an opportunity to come to her as opposed to fighting for it. Slowly but surely reeling him in, the exact same thing as what her dad is doing to Khos at the front end. And Kenny Khos now is in big trouble. Oh, wow. I wouldn't say he's in big trouble. I'm going to say Rolf Dupasi could be in big trouble. There's a black and white flag out there. Ungentlemanly like behavior from Rolf Dupasi. I've never heard of that in my life before. Let's see if he can keep it all clean for the rest of these laps that are going to finish up. Heat number one. He dives on the inside. That's pretty clean. 
Nothing wrong with that. He goes side by side. Kenny Close is going to try and come back at him. Oh, there's touching. Oh, and Rolfi loses out. Rolfi goes on the inside. Bashir gets Darby on the outside and comes up on Close. Can he make his way through? It looks like he might be able to. Yes, he does. Capitalizing on the mistake there from the two leaders as they went hard at it and bang wheels. And I think the COC might be having a chat to the two of them. No worries at all, though, for Fashir. He looks like he's going to try and hang on now. Or can he? Michelle Duplessis is still in the hunt and still looking for a chance. Remember, she stayed out of trouble. And the trouble's still raging in front of her as Rulf cannot find a way past. The frustration levels must be massive in that Simpson helmet of his as he goes around the outside looking for a chance now. The flag comes out. Fashir looks like he's going to take the victory. Let's wait and see what the COC says after all the touching and rubbing. Yes, Fashir gets it. Rolf Duplessis comes through for second. It's Kenny Close in third. And Rochelle Duplessis comes through for a fourth place, beating out Fonsell, Foster, Carlson, and Liza Fonsell. Up next, join us for all the action here from the Ultimate Outlaws. After race one, there are a couple of very hungry drivers in this pack of V8 sprint cars. And they're certainly looking to uh, just make amends for possibly some rough and tough stuff that happened in the front end. The two cars that were the biggest protagonists are now at the back. And let's keep an eye on the two of them as they try to make their way through. That'll be Rulf Duplessis and, of course, Kenny Coase. But it uh, looks like <laughs> Donny van Rooyen is up for just as much of a run and just as much fun at the front end. Already black and white flags being shown there to a couple of the drivers. We'll have to wait and see who those people are at the end of this one. But Rochelle Dubassi is now starting to make her way through up into third place. Race one winner is fourth right on her tail. The 4-7 car, as I said, uh, Dani van Rooyen looking for a chance to maintain and stay up there with Dubassi and for sure. They've got to find a way past the 12 car though first. And of course, Mornay Kutsia will definitely not like to keep anybody else. Oh, as I say that, he just loses out to Rudy Forster. Rudy Forster diving around his outside and now Katsia loses out to Rochelle. Looks like also to Fashir. And I think he might just be a little bit rattled because here comes Rulfi as well. Rulf looking for a chance to get around the outside of the 12 car and he does so. So the man who was on pole is just finding it very difficult to stay at the front end. He's lost out almost seven positions in one lap there. Just a bit of rattling there of the cage and Mornay Katsia had no answer to all of these uh, very, very capable drivers starting to dive their way to the front end and look for a chance for a victory here tonight. Over the line, 14 cars still leads out. Rudy Foster now has to keep an eye out because it's one of the fastest ladies in this country who's on his tail. And Rochelle Duplessis certainly will not hold anything back if there's an open opportunity. And the door opens up, she's going to dive through. But she's got to take into account that Fashir has already taken a victory. He knows just how vital those points are. And now sitting on Rochelle Duplessis, she dives on the inside. He wasn't close enough. If he'd been closer, he might have been able to go there and dive on the inside of Foster. Foster shuts the door in instantaneously, but of course he runs wide. Opening a chance there for Fashir, who didn't quite capitalize. Had a big look, and he's having another look now. He's looking on the inside. It looks like Foster's car might just be battling on the second part of these turns. Going in, it's fine, but coming out, the car is battling. You see what I'm saying? As he goes in there, he's all good, but he runs wide. And by doing that, in fact, it's not a bad thing because it's keeping Fashir out. But here comes Rufi. Rufi has a big look. See for sure. Whoa, look at that. Absolutely lit tires starting to light up there on both those 22 and 25 cars. Rufi around the outside. He's going to have to keep a, a weary eye on the inside of the track as he goes inside. He saw in the very late stage of that turn a big maneuver coming from the 47 car. And Donny van Rooyen all of a sudden is becoming the fourth car in this little battle. Van Rooyen looking to capitalize on any mistake that's made there by Fashir or Duplessis or even Foster. Where is Rufi going? That's a slightly different line to take into turn one, but I suppose it did work out. If he got through, he'd be telling me how good it was. There's another maneuver, and once again, the door firmly shut. Well, second place man here is just keeping it all together, allowing Rochelle Duplessis to get away at the front. Oh, what is going down there? Van Rooyen out of shape. Donnie Van Rooyen got it all lit up and slammed into the back of Rolf Duplessis. He won't be happy about that. There you can see coming in there a little bit too hot. Three wheels, in fact, as he went onto the inside of the curbing and tags Rulf Duplessis and puts him in the wall. So it looks like he's gonna to pull to the inside of the track. He's out of it, but Rulfi is on the outside. So those two cars stricken, one on the inside, one on the wall. In fact, he drives over the bonnet there. Can you believe that? Sprint car racing in the house here at Ultimate Outlaws. Rulfi's not happy because that would have been right over his leg. Yes, that's why he's limping away. 
All right, so we're under caution, and uh, unfortunately with that caution comes the checkered flag, allowing Rochelle Duplessis to take the second win of the night ahead of Rudy Foster, Stephen Fashir, and Rolf Duplessis eventually gifted fourth place, even though he was categorically taken out there. Donny Fenoy finished up in fifth on sale. Could see a Carlson and Coase, your top nine. Yes, I'm happy. At least I could race this this evening instead of like last week. I couldn't race. I had a bit of problems. Looks like it's sorted out, so I'm sure we can do better now in the final. So far, the car hasn't been at its best, but like I don't, I don't think we'll do too bad in the finals, and I hope it goes well. Um, we had the car turning a lot, lot better in that second heat, and um, yeah, I was just very upset. My my fuel pump came loose, and I was just on the gas, and the car just felt like it was breaking so it just went oh and nothing <laughs> so I had to pull off <laughs> yeah first race was good I just followed my dad all the way like I said he's my mentor and he's my hero so I just what he does I do um, and I would like to thank Uncle Isaac for the opportunity we have to drive this Second race I started six again and I thought and I prayed to God to please just give me a clear mind and help me through the field and I worked my way through and second last lap I took the lead and I just put my head down and went. Like I said always to you, thanks to the American guys to be here, uh, it's awesome to race against them with them on the same track and uh, meet all these guys, all the help they gave us. We struggle as everybody know, follow the series with my car to get my car to handle right and uh, we had a bit of a misfire problem with the car. Now we got the car sorted out by Brian Lay, helped me a lot, um, Adrian helped me a lot and uh, the car was perfect now. Um, as you can see I had a good first race, very good second race and uh, I think uh, Donnie got a throttle jam. I heard the car came from the back and this car is not going to stop so unfortunately I was next in line. Uh, um, he hit me hard, I hurt my back a little bit and my leg was needle and pin so uh, I think I will be alright. Alright, unfortunately no rule to proceed here for the third and final heat. Let's see if we can keep it all together though in the front end. As we've got uh, two very, very quick drivers leading things out. Fashir getting the whole shot. Just followed through there by Rochelle Duplessis and Kenny Close. Forster is up there again and so is the 27 car of Adrian van Sal. Haven't really seen much of him here this evening. Hopefully here in this third and final heat, he can do something about those top four just ahead of him. He's going to have to keep up the attack from Liza van Sal just behind. And Liza van Sal will just have to keep an eye out on the rest of the pack behind her. Ladies in the house and doing a great job. They've had an incredible outing here in this V8 Sprint Car Series. And they certainly can run with the boys at the front and in the mid pack. And as they come through there, the 27 car of Adrian van Sel now slowly but surely starting to just put a bit more pressure onto the car in front of Foster. Rochal Duplessis staying with Bashir at the moment, allowing him to dictate the pace. And you can see Kenny Coase is quite happy to sit in third place for now. Those three will probably go a little bit later on as we get the laps down and dusted. Bashir has opened up a bit of a margin now and in fact starting to light up those tyres just in time to take the checkered flag ahead of Rochal Duplessis and Kenny Coase. They finish up ahead of Foster, Liza Van Sel, and Charlie's Carlson comes through there for sixth place. Three ladies in that top six. Great outing there in the V8 Sprint Cars. Final heat. After the break, we head back to the Ultimate Outlaws for round three and the champion of champions in the USA versus South Africa. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tom Hartzell, part of Team USA here in South Africa in 2018. I'm going to try to explain a little bit about uh, some of the things we're going to do differently here today. It's the Champ of Champions Day here at Ultimate Raceway. Individual racing competition. There's no more SA versus USA. That was decided last night. It ended up in an ultimate tie over the two weekend shows. And I'll tell you, we are really excited about this Champ of Champions Day here in Verenigan. A little bit about what's going on today. It's going to be based on qualifying. Here's how it works. The fastest qualifier will basically be in control of the racing action here today. We will run heat races depending on the amount of cars that are entered in. Let's just say, for instance, that we're going to run heat three heats, okay? Say we've got uh, 18 cars. We're going to start six cars in each heat race. What's going to happen is this, the fastest qualifier here today will start in the number six 
starting spot in the first heat. In the second heat, number six spot will be filled by the second fastest qualifier. Third heat will be the sixth spot, the third fastest qualifier. Then you go back up to the first heat in the fifth position, which will be the inside of the third row. That will be your fourth fastest. Your fifth fastest will go to the second heat, fifth position. Sixth fastest will go to the third heat, fifth position, and vice versa until you fill your field out. Now, when it comes to feature time, and by the way, those are 10 lap heat races. Feature time, we're gonna run a 30 lap feature race here today. And what it'll be is based on a draw by your fast qualifier. So what we're gonna do, and in the states, depending on the amount of cars, how big the track is, we will either have a pill, we call it, that is either gonna be a six, and number eight, number nine, or number 10. And what that is, is for the starting position of the fast qualifier, or the inversion of the field. So for instance, let's say that the fast qualifier draws a number eight in the, in the uh, feature race. What that's gonna do is put him on the fourth row outside the number eight starting position, and then you go, the inside will be the second fastest, third row on the outside will be the third fastest, on the inside of the third row will be the fourth fastest, fifth fastest will be up on the inside, or outside of the second row, inside will be the sixth fastest, seventh in the first row, and the eighth spot will be filled, the pole position will be filled by the number eight qualifier of the total qualifiers that day. So that's a little bit about what we're gonna do in the racing program here today. We're gonna bring a little bit of USA racing flavor to South Africa here at the Ultimate Raceway. Thanks, Tom. Well, if you all understood that, good luck. Because here we go for heat number one. That's going to be top stuff. The top six drivers, very WRX style here as well. The top six going at it here for the first heat and seeing what they can do. Rulf Duplessis hangs on at the moment to the lead. Around the outside, you can pushing hard is Snyder. In fact, Snyder pushing so hard that he's lighting those tires up. Oh, almost all four of them, in fact, as they went through turn number three and four. 45 on the tail, of course, is going to be pushing hard. That's Brian Lay. So the two Americans looking to close down on one of SA's best. He's got uh, Andres Marks trying to apply a bit of pressure and help him out with a bit more of assistance from behind. And it's not going to be an easy day in the saddle here for Rolfi as he tries to hang on to these uh, two very quick Americans. And of course, his counterpart from South Africa, Andres Marks. Marks would help him out if he can just put a bit of pressure onto the back end of them. And that's exactly what he's trying to do here in the early stages. If he can find a way through to be the meat and the sandwich, it might just put a bit more pressure onto the two drivers and slow them up ever so slightly. He has a look at Brian Lay. Lay shuts the door. Not going to make it easy for him. It's certainly a bit of cat and mouse at the moment. Just trying to find a way through. There you go. The cat has eventually caught the mouse. And can he get through? Yes, he can. Good maneuvering and clean racing from the two of them. Enough room by the American just to get through there. Now, I don't think that's going to be the same thing when it comes to Derek Snyder. Snyder knows it's second and third, or second and fourth now, as opposed to first and third. So there's going to be some points that are going to be up to grabs because of that. So it's going to be a bit of a chess game now as well, as you can see, the pressure being applied by Andres Marks. Can he find a way through? It'll be exceptionally good if the two South Africans finish one and two in this first heat of the Champ of Champs. Remember, it's no longer sort of the team game that's being played though. There will be a little bit of South African versus America, but it's the fastest man on the day who's going to win the Champ of Champs here today. So uh, every man for himself, but of course the Americans are going to help each other out if they can, and so will the South Africans. Right now, Ruth Duplessis is just helping himself to the front end and no one seems to have an answer. And his marks eventually goes on the inside. Wow, he saw that opening and just dived and capitalized. Big time there, up to second. Now, has he got enough time to catch Ruth and possibly pass him? The way he's going, the way he's lighting those tires, he's certainly up for the game. And as they go through there, Ruth Duplessis will now realize it's no longer the two black cars on his tail. It's now a very fast number eight car, Andres Marks, looking for a way through. Rulfi will just go defensive every single time he can, but it's just enough to keep out Andres Marks. Marks just running out of laps there in the closing stages. So Rulf takes the first one ahead of Marks, Snyder, Brian Lay, and Charlie's Carlson in fifth. I must say thank you very much for Isak leaning as his keys cars again. Um, as everybody knew, I had a bad accident yesterday. Hurt my back a bit to my one leg. And uh, we rebuilt the car last night, and this morning we finished the car. I couldn't go out and practice. I went straight out and qualifying. The car was 
terrible to drive. And under the new American rules, it actually favored me. So I started second on the grid with, I think there was four or five Americans in the field. So uh, I'm over the moon for beating them and I'm um, very proud of myself uh, rebuilding the car and uh, winning the race. We took the green and going into turn one when I stepped on the brakes, it broke a brake bracket on the left front which let the caliper come around and ripped all the steering out of it. So then I tried to keep it off the wall and kept it off the wall, but you put these things in neutral, no brakes, no steering, no nothing, I just coasting along for the ride which I hate because then I got into the boss man's expensive race cars out there, but I, there's nothing you can do. You're just along for the ride at that point. Problems right at the start of the second heat, unfortunately for Quinton Simon, as he parks the car on the inside, which means we've only got five cars left in this heat. Led out by the 27 machine of Adrian Van Sal. Now, Adrian Van Sal, over this weekend has not taken a victory yet. So probably and arguably the hungriest driver out there is the 27 car. Great number, by the way. 71, absolutely flying is his speed. Great to see Spissy in the mix now as well. And looking to get to the front end right from the work go. And find a way through on what I thought was going to be a man behind the wheel of that car, but it's not. It's Lonica Martins in the five car today. And she's not holding anything back here. Great to see one of SA's top Hot rod drivers in the mix fighting with Jacques Roos as Roos goes through on the inside of her. Lonica hasn't had a lot of time in the seat here for V8 sprint cars, but this is a great opportunity to get some really, really good time in the saddle and fight out with some of SA's best. Carlson has been in the mix all weekend long, and you can see he's not going to hold anything back. Lonica unfortunately being dropped down to the back end. Can she hang on now? Let's wait and see. Remember, the five cars are still going to score points. So incredible to think that Lonica could still get 16 points out of this first heat and do her job of getting to the Champ of Champs final. Everything that she needs to. As they come through there, look at Ruiz applying the pressure. Spice just soaking it up for now. He's like Spice is not going to make it easy for these guys. Jacques Ruiz knows exactly what he needs to do and unfortunately it's not say in third place. He's got to try and find a way to the front end if he can. The front end of course is being dominated by Adrian Vassal as he drives away from these other four drivers. Heading down that back straight away, into three and four. Spice runs a bit wide, cuts back. He's making up some ground. They are starting to close in on the 27 car. Maybe Fonsal just taking it a bit too easy. They got one to go, and as they come through there, oh, mistake there from Ruiz. That's going to be costly. That's opened up a bit of a gap that he might not be able to manage now. Look at how he just lights it up. These guys love these V8 front cars. They really, really do. <laughs> they get them lit up for the crowd, and the crowd love it when these guys give it everything they've got and get those cars squealing through the turns. So it's Adrian Van Sal. He's done it all right. I don't think anyone's going to have an answer. And he's going to come through to take the victory here in heat number two of the Champ of Champs. It's going to be followed home by Isak Spice, who's going to hang on for second. But Spice was pushed in the uh, early stages by the man who comes through for third place, Jacques Ruiz. Charles Carlson Jr. finished up in fourth. And Lonica Martins in her first outing for the weekend in fifth place with 16 points. It's interesting, I like it, it's, it's something different, um, like today I had a bad qualifier so that gave me opportunity to uh, start on the pole today and I sorted my car out and I, I won the second heat so I'm, I'm happy. Um, yes, I'm happy, it's been a while since I was in Uncle Willie's sprint, um, he's still sorting a few stuff out, he drove the car yesterday, um, he qualified first so for me to step in his car, do the same, it's so difficult. But um, we'll get there. It's it's a other story to get from a hot rod into a sprint car. So I'm still getting used to the car, but I'm happy so far. If you're a South African fan, so far so good. Two victories for the South Africans. The Americans, I think, are going to be hungry now. What are we going to see here in this third heat? As they head down towards turn number one, the 17 car of Liza Van Sal leads them out, but she's got a very talented young lady, triple two, on her tail. And you can see Rochelle Duplessis does not want to be the second lady on track. She'd love to be leading, but she's going to have to fight out a big charge coming from behind in the form of X21. That's Jimmy McCoon. And McCoon is definitely looking for that first victory for the United States. Diving up in a second place, coming through with them, might be for sure. Rashir having a look, can he find a way through there? Stefan is pushing hard, but Rochelle Duplessis is just soaking up the pressure and not allowing him an opportunity to get past. Shouldn't be too much of an issue here around the outside for Jimmy McCoon, but McCoon is going to have to go around the outside as we see a dive on the inside from Rashir. Rashir dives through, 
And around the outside of Mitchie, Jimmy McCoon, can he get past on Fitzel? Fitzel going straight at it with the top American driver. That is fantastic to see. And certainly looks like the young lady is not concerned about fighting with one of the USA's finest V8 sprint car drivers. As they go into turn one and two again, she now has to fend off the attack coming from Fashir. Fashir looks like he's up for some challenges here today. And looking to get to the front end as rapidly as possible. I know that the Petura Toyota man certainly would love to take the champ of champs. Now he has to try and find a way through on Liza Van Sale. Liza Van Sale has been quiet the whole weekend. All of a sudden, she's shouting loud. And shouting loud for a second place. But fending off two of SA's finest V8 sprint car drivers. And doing a superb job of it. Black and white flags being shown to a couple of drivers. So we're going to have to be a little concerned about behavior on track. Maybe that's why Stefan Fischer has pulled off ever so slightly. And back into the clutches of Rochelle Duplessis. Super stuff. McCoon leading things out. No worries for him at all. Once he got to the front, he opened up at a good margin. But it was because of the defensive driving, an incredibly great driving, coming from second place and going to maintain second place, Liza Van Sell, by only a couple of hundreds of a second on three of the five drivers that were fighting at the front end. Van Sell gets second. Stefan Fashir finishes in third. It's Duplessis, Stutzman and Kutsia, your top six. The car is still a little bit tight, so we might made a slight adjustment now. I'm hoping to have it a little bit better in the final, but I'm happy with it. It ran very well. Thank you to my hubby for finally getting the car drivable. And uh, thank you to LSP, Isaac Spies, for giving us the ride of our lives. Yeah, I'm not happy with the car. It's pushing nose very badly, so I couldn't get a line to work for me. And then also some of the competitors is very hard to pass because they use the whole track and there's a white line rule but that's where I'm going to stay. I'm not going to go any further with that so I'm not happy with race one. We're going into the final right after this so join us for some incredible action from Ultimate Outlaws. Three points splitting the top three drivers into this final heat. This is for the champ of champs. At the front end, Andres Marks leads in terms of points. On his tail, Jimmy McCoon. And on his tail, by a three-point differential, is the 27-pointed Jacques Roos. Jacques Roos, fortunately, is at the front end and doesn't have to fight too hard. But McCoon is alongside him as they head down into turn one and two. Having to fight their way through there on Brian Tyler is not going to be an easy thing to do. The 11 car, of course, what a protagonist all weekend. Carlson Jr. is exactly where he wants to be. He's possibly not going to win the overall champ of champs, but he definitely wants to take the last victory here tonight. And that's why he's pushing as hard as he can. But what a pack behind him. They are all going on the attack. There is no defending here. They are all fighting hard for a potential champ of champs here at Ultimate Outlaws. And that is why we're seeing such great action. Tyler on the inside of the 70 car. Derek Snyder, the two Americans, absolutely lit through three and four. Absolutely brilliant stuff here as they come through. Jacques Roos now trying to capitalize as the door opens up. That 70 car has opened up a small margin. And can Roos capitalize? Yes, he can. He dives on the inside and gets through. And it looks like the eight car is going to go with him. Andres Marks, yes, perfectly done and perfectly positioned. As he went through there, that open door just gave him the chance. And he just made the move and made it stick. Around the outside, we've seen how good McCoon is on the outside in the previous heat. And he does the same thing here under floodlights. He goes around the outside and into the lead ahead of Carson Jr. and Simon. Great to have Quinton Simon back for this final. They got that car all sorted out and back into race action. He goes for a potential third place here in the race. But I'm not quite sure he's going to finish up overall. Doesn't matter where he finishes up overall. If he wins here on the night, that's what the crowd remembers. And he's having to look for opportunities. There's not a lot when Carlson Jr. is involved. He is definitely going left, right and centre and there's a move on the inside. Is he going to be able to force that car onto the high side as they come out of 3 and 4? No, he can't. Stefan Fashirna also under a bit of pressure as they head down and across the line. Wow! So close as Tyler had a dive. Brian Tyler looking for a way through on the 25 car. Can't find it yet. There's Simon on the inside of the 11. Carlson Jr. slammed the door shut. Not giving an opportunity, but unfortunately it cost him drive into turn 3 and 4. And there is exactly what Quinton Simon wanted. Up to second place now and pulling away. Look at how he opened up the gap as he dived through. He just opened up the throttle and got away from Carlson Jr. Carlson Jr. didn't have an opportunity to, to follow him because he's going so hard on the defensive to keep up for Shear and Tyler and Marks. What a battle here. This is for the champ of champs, remember. Coming up on the back markers now. Ooh, this could turn things around slightly. 
The 12 car up there, Mornay could see it just staying out of the way. Great job there from the back marker. Hold your line and the faster cars will get through. Not easy to get through, especially when you've got such a big battle. But what an incredible outing we've had here this weekend. 45 is Tyler, 70 is Derek Snyder, Rochelle Duplessis just behind them. The 70 car just fighting for the, the final of the Nevada's here in terms of the Americans. Who is going to be the top American finisher this weekend? We'll wait and see. It's been an absolutely amazing race weekend and race series. This, of course, being the third round of three. And the champ of champs now up for grabs. You can see just how difficult it's going to be, though, as Tyler tries to go on the high side. The Americans just seem to have that ability to use the high side of the track a lot better than the South Africans do. We saw it in the McCoon. We're now seeing it with Tyler. 11 versus 10. Is he going to reverse the numbers and put them into numerical order? Yes, he is. He goes into numerical order there. 10, 11, and then it looks like the 8 car wants to do the same thing as it goes on the inside. Wow, Marks is flying now with the last couple of corners to go. Look at that break disc. You can see it at the front lights and in the dark how hard he's working. For sure, is going to have to be on his best game here. Doesn't look like he's going to have an answer. Marks is on the inside. Can he make a tick this time? They are still side by side. That is three laps that have gone absolutely side by side. But eventually, it is Marks who gets through on For sure. This year, and now I'm trying to come back. Oh, I love the apron cars when they're up so close and when the mixing is happening like it is. Right, Andres Marks has seen that the high side of this track has got some grip. Can he do the same thing as what McCoon did earlier on and the same thing as Tyler? And he has. He's able to do it because it looks like Carson Jr. might be battling here in the closing stages. Just doesn't seem to have the same kind of drive out of the turns. You can see he's battling with the handling of the car again as it starts to slip and slide. There's only a couple of laps to go. Has anybody got an answer? I don't think anybody's going to catch Jimmy McCoon. He's got it absolutely dialed to perfection here for the last couple of laps. Rolfi Duplessis looking to make it up a little bit more ground than what he was over the lap. And over these last couple of laps, he has definitely been the most effective and most dangerous driver out on track as he goes diving on the inside of the 70 car of Derek Snyder. Snyder had no answer. He's now got his daughter. There's McCoon. Look at that. Look where Jimmy McCoon has ended up. He is diving on the inside of Snyder and closing on the back end of Rochelle Duplessis as we get into the closing stages. Those are now back markers. Those are usually our front runners in the South African Championship. Amazing to see this. And what an awesome effort here from Isak Spies and his entire team to put this event, the event together and show that the South Africans have got what it takes to run with the, SA, the USA's very finest. Coming to this, oh man, it is getting real out there. There are so many back markers to contend with. Rolf Duplessis doesn't realize that Jimmy McCoon is probably the leader and forcing him to go around the high side. As he comes around on the high side now, we've seen how good McCoon is there. But of course, Rolf Duplessis is not worried about that. He's just saying, I'm going to hang on here and try and uh, force this American wide. He loses a little bit of ground though. McCoon will capitalize on that. He comes through and gets through on Duplessis as Duplessis just went onto the inside. He tries to come back at him though. Wow, look at Rolf. Rolf's not worried about the fact that Jimmy McCoon is leading. Rolf just wants to go for the fight. So McCoon now coming up onto the back end of this field. Well, I say the back end. This is probably fifth, sixth and seventh place that we're fighting for right now. And Carson Jr. at this stage trying to hang on. But Jimmy McCoon, what are the tires that that man is running here this evening? Because he's just found grip where there is none. And he's got through on that entire pack. What an incredible bit of driving here. That's why they are so good at the apron car racing. The Americans showing us that they've got the metal to run with us and we're showing them just as good as we go into the final stages of this race. 45 car, look at this. Incredible stuff from Brian Lay. Attacking Rolf Duplessis, attacking Stefan Frischier, attacking Carlson Jr. And opportunities opening up here. Quinton Simon all on his own some in seventh place. He's just behind here, but remember he's caught up onto the back of his back because they're all fighting for the uh, latter stage of the top five. And in fact, it doesn't look like Quinton Simon is going to have enough time to squeeze through on these guys. He might just sit there and uh, he's pretty comfortable in second place so wouldn't have to worry too much about the fact that he's going to be pushed hard in the final bit of stages there from Andries Mark. So the two South Africans there in second and third place. But first place of course it's McCoon. Look at Carson though. Looking to go left and right through the back markers. How awesome is it to have all these cars out on track? It's such a busy pack. There is so much traffic. You've got to have your wits about you. You've got to know where you're going to put the car. You've got to realize that that is a back marker and no longer a front contender. Blue flags waving frantically. That'll mean that Quinton Simon is closing in on this pack and they need to know that the uh, quickest South African driver is coming through. Hopefully won't hinder his process and allow Andy Smarks to close in on him. The blue car is Simon. Keep an eye on that blue car in the background. It's starting slowly but surely to close in on the front end of this little pack of cars fighting so hard here for this Champion of Champions final. 
Carlson Jr. for Shear and Duplessis with uh, the 45 car of Brian Lay right on their tail. Lay around the outside now of Duplessis. Duplessis shuts the door, forces him to go a little bit higher than what he wanted, but he stays on that outside line. He comes alongside and can he get through on Duplessis? Duplessis hits the brakes. Oh, look at that, Lay around the outside, keeping it all, keeping it buried around the outside, nearly hitting the wall. That's how hard he's pushing. He knows that Quinton Simon is coming. Quinton Simon doesn't realize that these guys will probably not know that he is the second car on track and second place in this race. They're not worried about him right now. They just think he's part of this little fight. Checkered flag comes out though and Simon will take second place. It is Jimmy McCoon as this race is not done yet. Look at Brooke Duplessis. He's going to take it to the line as Andrew Smart comes through for third place. Carlson Jr. will finish up in fourth. And only just by fending off the attack coming from Duplessis, Brian Lay, Liza Van Sel, Stutzman and Adrian Van Sel. Monica Martin's in 11th place. It's Brian Tyler, Isak Spies, Jacques Ruiz, Kutsia Snyder and Rochelle Duplessis eventually down in 17th place. What an awesome race weekend. What a great series. We cannot wait for next time. Well, as last year, our experience here is awesome. I mean, well, I guess it's buy a buy a lecker. Um, we, we've had a great time, great people, and you know, hope to come back next year. Um, car, actually, we got it going pretty good for the feature there for the final, and, uh, and I wish we had about another 20 laps. That was a 30 lap feature, which you guys don't normally run. So these guys got some experience there to what it's like to run a full race. Hopefully, next time maybe we can come back and do a 50 lap feature, put on a really good show for the crowd. Well, what can I say, man? I mean, this is the best race. The people say that I've seen in years. Now, obviously, you the man, you're the number one here. Tell us, tell us about it. What did you feel, man? Ah, uh, man, I just felt a great race car you guys gave me. I mean, that's all I can say. I knew Freddie had a badass race car. Excuse me, a bad race car all week long. I've been watching him. I ran behind him a few times, and I was like, man, if I get a chance to drive that thing. And then, you know, Freddie and I started talking. We spoke to you. Um, we got everything sorted out to run it today, and made a few small adjustments um, with the car and some chassis setup stuff. And it just it really came alive in the heat race, and I knew we had a fast out rod, so um, I knew it was going to be whether I could get it hooked up on the outside or not. And it was just it was I couldn't ask for anything better. It was just perfect. I mean, you just told me it felt like you're back home. Yeah, it does. I mean, that car, the way I the way it was set up and the way it drove tonight was like how my car feels like at home. And uh, I mean, that's yeah. much fast, man. On you, this racetrack, I mean, it's, I mean, comparatively speaking, it's so flat and so different from what we normally do and to have a car that that was that good I never thought I'd have a race car on this racetrack that good and we did well amazing yes. man I'm so glad for you I can no, see thank you, you smiling oh my god yes <laughs> I know I mean, what can we say I mean fans this is what it's about it's all about this V8 uh, sprint car and I mean yeah he beat us with a smaller motor I mean that's the that's the reality it's not even a big motor in it no. and it just shows you you normally yeah. don't need all these horsepower roll the corners baby roll the corners you gotta roll the corners baby and that's what we they can say. all go straight but we gotta roll that corner uh, amen <laughs> so let's make it happen fans this is what it is they'll be back and they'll be back here at ultimate outlaws Well, Tom, what a series. I think it's awesome. What do you think, man? You know, there's, there's, uh, you'd really struggle to find words to describe what this has been like the last two weekends here at Ultimate Raceway. The competition is just, it's been absolutely astronomical. Y you know, it's one of those events that you go into both weekends that you're not knowing, other than, of course, Team USA, because there was only five of us here, but you don't have a clue as to who you're going to be up against and who you're going to be racing. Andreas Marks had just a fantastic meeting uh, the last two weekends. The, the, he has just grown astronomically in the last five years when I was here the first time in 2013. And, and the driving has just gotten better and better and better and better. And I'll tell you, Isak, you're really on to something here. Um, you're bringing that level of, of competition here in South Africa from down here to up here in a very quick, sh short period of time. And, and what we've done here the last two weekends is really shown the quality of drivers in the world that are involved in, in pavement wing sprint cars. It's just been, uh, it, 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 there's no words to describe it, just no words. Well, I must say, I'm very impressed uh, what happened with the South Africans. They qualified very well. Very much. Uh, yeah, and I think also what was more impressive is that we had a draw. 
I mean, yeah. obviously we wanted one team to win. Yeah. Last year the South Africans win, but this year it's a draw. So it shows you the competition is good. Very it much. shows you the quality is good. And I mean, the cars that we gave to, the, to, to you guys obviously was good cars. Yes, we had here and there a problem and everything, but I think overall, I think it's phenomenal. It's great. Well, and you know, you talk about the cars and, and the work that we had to put into them. The driving styles are a little bit different. You guys still got a lot of dirt cars over here with the hard bars and, and we're a lot of coil spring cars over there. And that's the difference between a dirt car and a pavement car. Uh, there was a couple cars out here yesterday what you could tell had raced on dirt because the guys that drive it into the corners harder, they pitch the car to get it to turn and a drag race down the straightaways. Where the pavement cars, they keep the front ends down and they steer through the turns. It's, it's totally different setups on the cars, but I tell you, it, it, that goes back to individual driving styles. You know, I talked, matter of fact, I was talking to Brian Tyler about it today, that would, did it give a big advantage over the pavement cars? And it's all in, in about driving and, and learning. You know, Andres had a, a dirt car, but you didn't see him pitch it like you did a couple of the other guys to get through the turns. He's learned to keep that front end planted, and he's just working on pure raw horsepower is what it's all about there. Well, I can't wait for the next tour. I'm Me sure neither. You, I'm ready to go. Yeah, there we go. And I think also from our side, you know, obviously we were still planning to do something in America. We're working hard on it. And all I want to say to the inspectors, man, this is great stuff. This is awesome. These 800 horsepower cars. I mean, I, I, I get goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, I know. I'm just yeah, chilling yeah, right yeah. now. It's absolutely know. amazing. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for all the guys that's here. And we see you again. The next bit of action at Ultimate Outlaws in Berlin is on the 28th of April as we go for the Interclub Championships. Make sure you come and join us here on the night and catch all the action here on Ignition.